Trump stayed up late into the night making deranged posts onto Truth Social like the one I have on screen now where he says that women must feel poor and unhappy and depressed and unhealthy under the Biden administration. He also accuses them of executing babies after birth. And yeah, Trump, if women are feeling unhappy, I'm sure all that they want is to be yelled at in an all caps post by the man who took away their most fundamental freedom. I sent this into my family group chat and my grandma said he is deranged. To actually write that and hit post is a special kind of deranged, and that is a great way to sum it up. We have 45 days to go until the election and a lot to break down, so make sure you leave a like, make sure you're subscribed to the Adam Mockler channel, and let's start off with this Simon Rosenberg tweet that will help us lay the groundwork for what follows throughout the rest of the video. He said, Trump didn't return abortion to the states. He took it away from women and their doctors and gave it to Republican politicians. It may be the single most batshit crazy thing he says. And I absolutely agree. If you watch my show a lot, you know that I always say Trump didn't leave it up to the states. He left each state up to taking the most extreme measures. And I always cite Arizona, which immediately reverted back to an abortion law from 1864 that was draconian. And that was a direct effect that was directly caused by Donald Trump, quote, leaving it up to the states. And time and time again, every time that education is left up to a state or healthcare is left up to a state, the Republican politicians always try to get in between the state in that education. For example, they're trying to put biblical verses in classes. They are trying to remove certain books from classes. And also, when Donald Trump tries to claim in this post that I'm about to read that he has helped women more than any other politician or any other president, that is a total lie. He will say that in this true social post that I'll read, but watch this post from Kamala HQ. What the hell do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? He says, vote Trump, what do you have to lose? Vote for Donald Trump, what the hell do you have to lose? What well, as Kamala HQ rightly points out, even two people lost their lives due to Trump's policies. Abortion bans have delayed emergency medical care. In Georgia, experts say this mother's death was preventable. It was entirely preventable. At least two women in Georgia died after they couldn't access abortions and timely medical care in their state, ProPublica has found. This is one of their stories. And uh, the Kamala HQ account points out this week it was reported that at least two Georgia women died. That is what we have to lose. I mean, even besides women losing their fundamental right to health care, even men in America, people in my family rely on the Affordable Care Act, which Donald Trump wants to take away. We have that to lose. We would lose our standing on the world stage. Ukraine would lose the war. We could lose our constitution that is not perfect, but it's in existed since the inception of America. We could lose the institutions that aren't perfect, but the institutions that held after January 6th. So when Trump asks, vote for me, what is their to lose. Actually, a lot is at stake. And the thing is, as we get closer to the election, Republicans seem to be getting more and more deranged. Not only this post that was sent late at night by Donald Trump, but also J.D. Vance did an interview with Tucker Carlson this week that I'm going to break down in another video, but this links perfectly because Tucker Carlson began to ask J.D. Vance about the possibility of a military coup if Trump wins. Quote, that's what worries me. Tucker Carlson asked Republican VP nominee J.D. Vance to speculate over what the left might do if he and Donald Trump win in 2024. After Vance predicted that he and Trump would prevail this November, Tucker Carlson asked the Ohio senator if he thought that they'll accept that, referring to the Democrats. And after they talk for a bit, they say, quote, and if he gets elected president, once again, do you think they'll accept that? Are you concerned? They've spent the last 10 years taking full control of the U.S. military. Yeah, Vance agreed, which is, I mean, I'm sorry to even talk like that, but they think that way, so it's worth saying it finished Carlson. And here's how Vance replied. He explained, the biggest threat to democracy in this country is not Donald Trump using legal maneuvers to challenge the 2020 election. The biggest threat is the bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. And he even floats the idea that if Trump becomes president, they will do things to take him down, quote, take him down, which is obviously apocalyptic rhetoric trying to sow division in America. But I would absolutely argue that the biggest threat to democracy is Donald Trump trying to subvert the will of the American people and not the 
bureaucracy in Washington. And when he says bureaucracy, he's referring to the civil servants that keep our country floating every single day. Trump wants to get into office and fire tens of thousands of these civil servants and replace them with his own loyalists. So that is why J.D. Vance is so gleefully undermining the efficacy of these people in the government. This brings us on to Donald Trump's post today. This all ties together because they're just so deranged and they're getting more deranged with every single day that passes. Trump posted in all caps, women are poorer than they were four years ago, are less healthy than they were four years ago, are less safe on the streets than they were, are more depressed and unhappy than they were four years ago, are less optimistic and confident in the future. I will fix all of that, says Trump, and fast. And at long last, this national nightmare will be over. He says women will be happy, healthy, confident, and free. Just a side note, I'm sure nothing makes women in America feel more confident and secure than Donald Trump screaming at them in an all caps post that they must feel happy. You will no longer be thinking about abortion because it is now where it always had to be with the states and a vote of the people and with the powerful exceptions like those that Ronald Reagan insisted on for rape, incest, and the life of the mother, but not allowing for Democrat demanded late term abortion in the seventh, eighth, or ninth month or even execution of the baby after birth. I will protect women at a level never seen before. Okay, this post is absolutely insane. He then says they will finally be healthy, hopeful, safe, and secure. Are women not healthy right now? What is he implying? Their lives will be happy, beautiful, and great again. Did he just pull out a thesaurus? Okay. So the main part about this that really pisses me off, I'm sure women in the audience are already pissed off, 100%, but it's the fact that Donald Trump says in the very same post that he's helping women, that women are having late-term abortions or even executing a babies executing babies, sorry. He is accusing women of murder in the same exact post that he is saying he will help women. He's not only accusing women of murder, he's accusing them of murder for using healthcare means that are available to them. And Donald Trump does this all the time. So when he's trying to court the Jewish vote, the vote of Jewish Americans, he derides them and calls Jewish Americans insane. He says they are mentally unwell or need to get their head checked. When he's talking about black Americans, he totally forgets the fact that he undermines VP Harris's identity. And this this one is absurd because within the same breath, within the same post, he says, women are poorer than they were four years ago. I will fix all of that. But then he says, you won't even be worried about abortion. That is a weird line too. You will no longer be thinking about abortion. I mean, the only way women will no longer be thinking about their very fundamental rights being stripped away is if you forcefully make sure that nobody can talk about abortion. Because I guarantee you for the next decade, two decades, however long it takes to codify Roe, women will be thinking thinking about abortion also because women are dying at rates that are never seen before. I mean, two women died just recently in Georgia. And again, when Trump says in this post, he wants to leave it up to the states, as he says, uh, with the states in a vote of the people, Again, that is a lie. Trump didn't return abortion to the states. He took it away from women and their doctors and gave it to Republican politicians. It may be the most single batshit crazy thing he says. So to tie all of this together, Donald Trump claims to help women by stripping away their fundamental rights and causing deaths in states like Georgia, increasing the infant mortality rate in states like Texas. Trump then accuses women of executing their babies after they are born, which is just a crazy, heinous his accusation and he did all of this in an all caps post on true social late at night. This is a new level of derangement. And if any Trump supporters are watching in the audience, because I know that 90% of the people that watch are liberals, but we do get a lot of MAGA trolls in the comments saying, Adam, you're a dumb libtard, Adam, nothing you say is true. So I know there are a few watching statistically. Defend this. Tell me why Donald Trump is posting such a deranged post and how this fits in with the legislative agenda of a president who apparently wants to make America great again. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment a blue heart, hit that subscribe button. 45 days to go. We built this amazing community. Let's absolutely rip this. Have a great day and peace out.